from cold and cloudy to scorching hot and sunny. For this trip, we fly with Jessar to Proserpine, then drove a rental car to Ely Beach. I thought our previous holiday was tropical, but this felt like something straight out of Moana. The turquoise water, tree-covered mountains, and bushes along the beach was something I couldn't get used to. We booked two rooms at the Waterfront Coral Sea Resort, which had a cleaner aesthetic and became one of my favourite holiday resorts to date. Though it was turquoise, it wasn't the cleanest water. Don't know what that is. But I didn't expect what was to come in the next few days. Went on the main street to check things out and get some souvenirs. Then for our first adventure, we boarded a mate's yacht to check out the islands of the Whitsundays. I swear one day I'll purchase my own boat or yacht and make all kinds of videos. But anyway, does this boat look familiar? Our first destination planned was Whitehaven Beach. It's said to be one of the prettiest and most beautiful beaches in Australia, which means this video won't actually be clickbait. Along the journey I did do some island spotting. In total there are 74 islands. We passed Daydream Island, North Mole Island, Mid Mole Island, South Mole Island, Spion Cop Lookout, then next to it is Planton Island and Long Island in the back, Dent Island, Henning Island, Sid Island, Whitsunday Island, Fitzalan Island, I think that's how you pronounce it, and another part of Whitsunday Island, Hamilton Island, this is where we were originally going to stay, but we changed our minds and decided to stay at Airlie Beach. As we were cruising along, I couldn't help but notice the areas of rock and things to explore, but unfortunately I wasn't in control of the boat, so I couldn't go check it all out. Then as we approached Whitehaven, we settled a spot to anchor, then lowered the tender to take us to the dreamy paradise that I thought was too good to be true. Though it wasn't crystal clear like the pictures, the actual turquoise colour that I mentioned before felt like it was still fresh and clean to swim in. why they call it Whitehaven. The sand itself is near 99% pure silica, which is quartz and grains, whereas majority of the beaches globally only contain 95% silica. The high concentration of quartz gives it the bright hue. You'll be squinting your eyes if you don't have any kind of sunglasses with you. Because of the low visibility, you had to look closer to sea life if you want proper shots. You can see my attempt of filming the fish spinning by on the top left. I'd say the most interesting thing I saw was this specimen underwater. I wanted to check out further ahead, but the crew didn't want to stay too late so I said goodbye to Whitehaven and boarded back on the yacht. While departing, we had to figure out the next location we would anchor for the night. Macomb Inlet was the best bet. The main thing to look out for was wind coverage and slack wavy conditions. Inlets like this are the best option because of mountains blocking gusts from all directions. Except if winds go this way. If we were to get south easterly winds, being in there wouldn't have made a difference. Along the journey, I spotted plenty of steep rocks and cliff faces going straight into the water. This and big waves are some of the key elements for hydraulic action. This one here is called Cairns Lookout. At a barbecue to settle for the evening while contemplating to go for a fish. But in the end we decided to go for the plunge. I dunked the GoPro underwater for any possible videos of fish zooming by, with not much luck. When I say zoom, I mean it literally. The fish were very speedy near the blue light. At the time, my conclusion was they were simultaneously scared and attracted to the light at the same time, hence why they were fast. Come closer. While watching the video back, I noticed the small bait fish close to the camera had this bioluminescent look to them. Oh my god, I just missed it. Even though it was just the blue light. More and more anticipation was building up as we were getting closer to catching a fish. 
Meanwhile, a moth was dancing to Blue Monday. Surprisingly, my dad caught something, an Atlantic tarpon to be precise. Of course it is. Yeah, 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 100%. After a closer inspection, we realized the fish wasn't as flashy and would be hard to eat. Eventually, we also found out that tarpons are a popular sport fish and aren't easy to catch either. This is mainly because of their agility and fight, meaning they jump when hooked, which explains the first clip. The following morning, I wanted to jump straight in for a swim. The reason why I didn't is because the water possibly has sharks or crocs. Why? Because sharks especially love muddy waters and it's a common breeding ground for them. As we put up the anchor, we had to clean off a lot of the mud. Began our sail again and passed more stunning islands and specifically small, isolated, cozy little beaches. The tiny beach earlier I showed you was a spot I'd dream of camping or even just setting foot on. Taking cinematic videos there would be movie-like. I'm gonna be there one day. As well as that, there is this sand phenomena here called shoals. That's the reason why that black sign is there. It is to indicate any posing threats such as sandbanks, rocks, etc. As we continued the journey, we travelled through the same opening near Cairns Lookout before. There was a small current I noticed and it was going the same direction as the wind. We travelled around the bend while looking at some more majestic rocks. We planned to anchor at Manta Ray Bay or Luncheon, but Manta Ray wasn't available so we tried Luncheon which also wasn't available. Then we alternatively anchored at Maureen's Cove. Then as usual we hopped on the tender and drifted back to luncheon. Then as we accidentally beached the tender, we did finally set foot on the bleached dead coral. But I must say guys, it was paradise on earth. Unfortunately, there was tons of dead coral, but there was still plenty of fish to look at. I would name them all for you, but the apps and websites I tried to use to get the names of them weren't very reliable. The rocks themselves were these nice, beautiful, smooth boulders, but there was tons of limpets and shells that made them really sharp. The 
decided to quickly check out the other side of the luncheon. I was a bit anxious jumping off the tender straight in the deep water. For me, that is a lot more scarier than gradually swimming into deep water, and I'm pretty sure lots of other people can relate. Because of that, I decided to just swim to shore first, get my bearings, and then swim back out. There's ever a place in the world that I would stay forever, honestly. I think this one's on, on the list. That last snorkel with the green fish pecking the rocks had to be my best yet. I'm confident they were sucking up some sort of plankton for food. Then we sailed once again to find a spot for our last night. We had to wait a bit, but eventually we did get a buoy at Stonehaven Bay. These blue buoys are used to attach your boat to the rope provided because you're not allowed to use your own anchor due to protected reefs. Yes, that was supposed to be a Manu. Anyway, that was the day we headed back. As you can see, we had a very rocky boat ride. GoPro battery charger, cable fucked. I'm in the resort right now, and I just found the craziest thing. Um, my brother's asleep, so I don't want to like talk in front of him and stuff, but people have left their YouTube accounts on the YouTube app on the smart TV um, that's in the room. So I'm going to show you um, what I'm doing. I'm logging into their accounts. I don't need a password or anything. I, you know how easy it is for me to just hack their accounts and do whatever. But obviously I don't know how to do that. Cool. So basically all I'm doing is I'm going into the accounts that are left on the TV and subscribing to my channel. So to the three people who I did do that to, if you're wondering why you subscribed, that's your reason why. Now. What I am going to do is actually remove the counts, just in case anyone does decide to hack or know what they're doing. So I'm going to remove. The following day. <coughs> we checked out a waterfall called Cedar Creek Falls. Turns out because there was no rain, there's no actual water falling down the rocks. You can tell the fish definitely get fed a lot because every time you throw a leaf in the water they freak out and think it's food. 
Even the turtles wanted to join the hustle. It's amazing. No waterfalls because there's no rain, so no water's able to flow off the rock. But it's still really pretty. <clears throat> I can talk quietly too. I didn't notice until after I stopped recording, but I had the fright of my life when I saw a massive bug go underneath my camera. You can actually hear it trot over to the camera and then try and squeeze itself under it. There is people in the water. Waterfalls over there. Definitely tell where all the water is normally. <sighs> it's getting pretty busy now, so. Yep, kind of glad we came when we did, but it's good. Really beautiful place. Reminds me of Noosa. Then we headed back up from Airlie Beach to Dingo Beach and Cape Gloucester. We had a little geezer at Monty's Reef Resort and the restaurant there. It was a very secluded spot because it was small little huts and hammocks along the water. We moved up further ahead to an even more secluded spot called Froggy's Beach, which again had more of those amazing boulders. Honestly, if I had the type of camera to do that, where I would record for a certain amount of time, about an hour, then I would repeat it for seven hours, eight hours, I honestly would do that. But a GoPro can't really do that. The only sea animal I did see was a gummy shark, but we did come to the conclusion that there would definitely be crocodiles in summer there. Especially this spot. The waterfront here was along Aqua Point and Oh My God Hill. Um, yeah, I'm not making that up. Sure has to be some sort of crocodiles or something that come here. Blue Kester Island, I think that's what it's called. Someone else has got a similar idea. Having a bus to wind down for the last night, which does unfortunately bring me to the end of this video, I do hope I have given you guys some insight of the Whit Sundays and Ellie Beach. You better during the sunset. we have to leave is when it is flat, barely windy. On top of all that, just like getting off the plane there, it was a shock to the system getting off the Zest Star plane back in Melbourne. I guess I really should start doing proper outros, but that's all folks, thanks for watching.